Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Princess coming to you from the Deeper Life Bible Church Singles Channel. And we are actually um, a faith based relationship group where we talk about Christian relationship, we talk about um, how to court efficiently and how to have a godly and a Christian home um, eventually. So we, are, we have a group on Facebook. We have a page on Facebook bearing the same name, the Palai Bible Church Singles. Um, and then we're on Instagram too. And we are called DLBC Singles. So do well to follow us on Instagram. And if you are blessed by the videos that we bring here, remember to subscribe, to like, and to share to somebody who might need this information. Today we have a guest, <laughs> Dr. Obina Ezuduke in person in the house today. He's going to talk to us from a man's perspective about some of these things that we, we have been discussing on the group, lots of questions going on on the group. If you have not joined that group, don't forget to join the group. There is a lot of questions and answers and mentors and advisors, pastors and leaders that are on the group to help guide the singles with all their questions, all their concerns. And it's been a, very, a blessed time. We had a prayer time. We had, you know, conversation times. We, we are still planning more get togethers. I hope that you are blessed as you join the group, as you subscribe to the channel, and as you remain till the end of this video. Today we're talking about what is an ideal woman? From a man's perspective, yeah. a woman thinks I'm ideal for whatever th things she thinks or future she thinks she has, but a man thinks differently. So, Dr. Obina is going to tell us what he thinks or what he considers to be an ideal woman okay. <laughs> over to you <laughs> oh well i think i'm going to start with this caveat i've never been married i'm not currently married but i would love to be married so that being said the question of what's an ideal woman i believe what it means is what biblically is considered an ideal woman there are several places in the bible if we want to go through the bible we can start from genesis even to Revelation, you see different. You, you're going, we are going to see different accounts of women and how they handle things. If, you, if we if we start from Genesis, we can see the case of Adam and Eve. When we head towards Revelation, we see the case of Jezebel over there. So, we, if we go through the Bible, we're going to pick one. You know, a bit here, a bit there. Different books of the Bible, but the essence is the interesting thing is this. Let me start like this. I hear even actually many things are happening in the church today. A few weeks ago, someone told me that a friend of his, that he, a friend of his visited him telling him that his wife of, I don't know, maybe less than about six years of marriage said that she wants to separate because that they're incompatible, something like that. So that friend of mine was telling me that a friend of his okay. was telling him that his wife was seeking separation. They have, I think, his son together. And that marriage is about, from what he said, six, well, less than 10 years, give or take. So I was, I was trying to ask him, what did your friend say was the issue? That friend was saying that his wife said that they are incompatible. And this is not the first time I've heard that. This thing. It happens outside the church, even in the church. And whenever I hear it, something comes to my mind, which I read it somewhere, I can't remember, but it was it's making reference to 2 Corinthians 5 17, where it says, if, if we are in Christ, anyone who's in Christ is a new creature, all things are possible, all things are new. So when I hear it, what comes to my mind is that 
if we say we are Christians, or if that woman says she's a Christian, and suddenly they're incompatible. Now the question I have that comes to my mind is, two Christians, how can they suddenly become incompatible? If we say we are brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ to start with before even we go to husband and wife. So the question I have at the back of my mind is, are these people still Christians in the real sense? Because I mean, I think of it, there's no way in the Bible that we see that so-called issue of incompatibility come up. Except indirectly in the Old Testament, um, where the issue of divorce, um, Moses said, okay, you can divorce. But also, he did not give any specific reason. And if you remember in the New Testament, when the Pharisees and the scribes and the leaders were asking Jesus, okay, why did Moses say this? Jesus was made it plain to them that, see, this was not God's plan, or this is not God's plan. So that's one side of it, because we're still talking about ideal women. So Jesus actually negated what Moses had done. Not necessarily right. negated, he tried to explain to them what Moses did. But he's saying that like God did not have that, that in mind. So, so it's, it's not, it, it's not, it didn't come from God. Mm. Right? It was because it's of the hardness of their heart. He's like, okay, God just permit. Let's did God away. permit it? Did Moses no. even consult from God before? I, so it, so it, that's it, another topic. No, it's, 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 topic. It's, it's not clear, but the, the crux of the matter is that Jesus to have made it clear, but this is not God's plan. Yeah. yeah, okay. This is not God's plan. Okay. So, however, we want to take it for you. What is coming is that this is not God's plan. Okay. Now, the question of what's an ideal woman? Biblically speaking, the truth is, an ideal woman is. I've heard several teachers and people say it, say it like, maybe not the same way, but say something like this. An ideal woman is a woman that so loves God and pursues God that God is first and foremost in her life. Okay. In such a way that when she is married, because God is so foremost in her life, the place where her husband should be in her life just falls naturally in place. That's where, that's the, I don't know how to put it, that's a short way of saying it. Because if we want to start saying, oh, how, how, how will she behave? How will she, those, you know, we will start getting into 10 points, you know, 15 points of what the woman should have. But I think the summary is a woman that so loves God that, how I put it, whether there is problem in her home or there is peace in her home, the way she handles is it is the way God wants it to be handled. That, that, I mean, the way she lives her life, the way she carries herself. Essentially, I think that's that's the ideal, we're talking about woman for, ideal woman to become a wife, isn't it? That, yes, that, like that, now, what, what do you think that you want to see in the woman that you expect to have as a wife? What do I want to see from my own wife to be? Now, this is where now gets specific. I know that um, I'm like different people will have different things. Eh? Yes. But fundamentally, I'm going to start with what we can say a godly man. Let's just pause there a bit. There are two scriptures that always pop up in my mind. One is the you know popular Proverbs 31. Proverbs yes. 31 30 that says um, favor or is it charm is deceitful, beauty is vain. Okay, yes. the, shall be free. the verse before that one, 31 to 29, somewhere there, was saying that many daughters have done virtuously. Yes. Check that out. Yes. It's not saying that other daughters, they are not bad, they've done virtuous, but she excels them. Okay. Now, Proverbs 26 is talking about the man. It says, many people will proclaim their goodness. So many men will say, you know, I'm good, I'm a good man, I'm a good guy. But he says, a faithful man who can find. So the way I see it is that a godly man that is seeking for a godly wife, for yes. a godly woman, that godly man must be faithful. He's not just good. I mean, he can be good but still be unfaithful. But he has to be faithful. I mean, think of it this way. How many people do you know that? If they tell you something, your word is like yeah, gold. I mean, if they say, I'm coming today, even if it's 12 midnight and they have not come you know this is beyond their way that is the definition of faithfulness i mean less in little things little big the man might not have the limousine and ferraris you know, but if he tells you this is what i'm working on mm. you can rest assured this man is working on it. it's not 
he might not have matured, but if he tells you, I'm working on this, you, you can rest. He's working on it. Now, on the flip side, on the, um, the woman's side, you, you see the difference. On the man's side, he's talking about faithfulness. On the woman's side, he's talking about virtue and fear of God. Those, those two combinations. Okay, on the female side, or on the female side, you ask yourself, how many women? Actually, I, I told a friend, I, I asked a friend, you know, this particular friend has been, you know, at times they'll come and tell me, you know, what's going on? Ah, all these ladies, you know, won't you marry this, this, this? I told him, I said, see, if you can tell me that, I know this lady, she's a godly woman. Just give me her number. And the, the guy just kept quiet. You see, that's the issue. If we, if we are talking about oh, the ideal woman, this woman should be someone that every, I mean, anywhere she goes, people will say, other people might do like, but oh, this person is a godly woman. That's it. This kind of thing is, is not hidden. Even people that, you know, people might hate the godly woman. They might hate her, but they will tell you, this is a godly woman. We don't like that she, you know, you know gives us her time on these things we bought, you know. So godly woman, like if you flesh it out, Godly woman, like, I mean, anybody can say they're godly. But what's no, your definition that's, that's of That's what I'm saying. Woman? Anybody, talk is cheap. Anybody can say I'm godly. But the, the Bible says, it says, by their fruit you shall not. The first, if I just, what did you say? Say, say? Unless, there's only he put it, say, unless your righteousness is it exceeds that of the Pharisees. The Pharisees, they had their own brand of righteousness. Yes. So they could come out that's and That's invisible. Say, Exactly. They, 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 they could come out and say, you know, I'm righteous. But Jesus Christ started going in. He said, you people destroy widows, houses, you take their money in the name of whatever. You, you know, he started going deep into what right, true righteousness entails. Oh, so now as a human being, as a young person, hmm. what's the simple way to say, okay, this person is godly. Is it in the way that they dress, in the way they talk, or what else are you looking at? You've talked about their word is being yeah, their boss. Yeah. Somebody can be very faithful in keeping appointments. True. But does that make that person godly? No way. No. The Bible says by their fruit you shall know them. That's one aspect. Your word being your actually. That should even that should just be beginner stuff. Jesus Christ said we should not swear. Mm-hmm. Let our yes be yes, let our no be. That should just be beginner stuff, you know. Your, your, your word is she keeps to our word. Yes. Okay, number two. Number two. Number two, I will say, and this is where it gets tricky, honestly. I mean, this is where it gets tricky because I think this particular aspect hits on, shall I say, feminine nature. There is this book, I don't want to be recommending books up and down before people say. No, oh, you're free. Okay. It's a marriage there, book. Okay. There, there is this book called uh, Secret Marriage, if I remember, by Gary. Oh, Gary, Gary Chap- no, Gary Chapman wrote five of my books. This one is Gary. Gary something. I've forgotten the last name. But Se- the Sacred Marriage. That's Sacred Gary Marriage. Book. Okay. I can't remember if it's in that particular book or another of his books where he said a man's there is a common witness to men, ego or pride. There is a common witness to women, and it is vanity. Hmm. Now. If you look at the Bible, almost everywhere, from old to new, when they're trying to address um, like women issues, or you know, it, it, if you look at it, it's almost as if they are always talking about comportment, about dressing, about appearance. And, you know, even in our day to day, if you raise this kind of topic, topic in a, in a church or in a fellowship setting, you're going to you know, cause lots of, I don't know, what, what do I call it, friction or... Gary Thomas. Gary Thomas, that's the one first name. Gary Thomas, secret marriage. Okay. Now, the second thing is, how does he, how, how does that so, carry herself? Courage. Courage. Okay. Because why, why I think courage is important is, as a woman, there's this research that was done. I don't know what part of the research I they said, which part of the woman's body do you think people notice more? Or, or, no, yeah, I think a woman or a generally human being, people say different things. But what it boils down to is, if a woman dresses well, what people will notice and remember is her face. 
Isn't it interesting? If a woman carries herself well, they will remember her face. It's her face that people will see and focus on. The problem is given the feminine nature, if you don't carry yourself well, actually what you're doing is you're distracting, especially people of the opposite sex, you're distracting them from even having any conversation, serious, or even sticking to that conversation with you. Mm. That's the problem. But, the, the, you know, that's why I say this issue of uh, feminine composure. If you look at the Bible, when they try to address feminine issue from Old Testament to New, it's about comportment and dress. Because it's very key. In, at times I think of that, I say, God is just awesome. God knows what he did, the whole wiring he did on the male and the female side. The problem is that we as human beings, we, 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 it's hard for us to accept what God has done or the way God has done the whole thing. I mean, that's the way I see it anyway. And do you know the interesting thing? I've been following, uh, people call it culture, I've been following recent discussions in okay. different groups, yeah. podcasts. Now, these are not Christian groups. Okay. Just one group might just be talking about men issues, one group might be talking about professional people, okay. single uh, men, women, okay, for men. And do you know the interesting thing I noticed? There was, there was one that mentioned that so called high power, that is high earning men in their career or in their business. You know, he asked them because he asked them, What are you looking for? Now, this is not Christian or just, you know, what are you looking for? Do you know the interesting? Do you know what they said? Now, now this one is specific. He's talking about black and men looking for black women. Do you yeah. know what they said? Yeah. It's a way that a black woman can wear the <laughs> no, no, the hair part again. No, no, no. Okay. This, this one is not even Chris. Uh, you know, like uh, so, black men want to see their say, women carry their natural say, hair. Why can't you carry your natural hair? That's number one. Oh, that's number two. Number two, you see, why do you have to wear eagles' nails? Well, no. Now, when I was hearing this, and I was like, wait, is this church stuff? Or you know? oh, I looked at it and I was like, no, 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 it's not. And you know the interesting thing? Wow. Women started calling in. And if you see them, <laughs> they don't know the way women dress. Some will wear nose rings and, you know. So you see, the, the issue is this. Let me put it this way. We know what a godly woman should be. You know, you, we can't deceive ourselves. I think the problem is this battle between, the, the Bible says, between spirit and flesh. We can know what it should be. Is The question now is, are we willing to accept or are we willing to do it? I think that's what it boils down to. Because honestly, a godly woman is, her own fashion is always going to be out of step with the fashion in general. I mean, it's, it's a given. Even a godly man, the way, I mean, that's why if you see most godly men dress, when people see them, they'll think, oh, maybe this person is working at a law firm it's, you know, traditional conservative, that kind of you know, clean shaving, all this stuff. You know, the, the, the interesting thing is that the people in the world, they know this thing. If they have a very important meeting, for example, they want to meet someone, you know, meet a president, or you want to close the big billion dollar business deal, you don't just go dress the way you, you know, dress, even if you're a woman. There's, there's, certain, way you, there's certain way you carry yourself. I mean, it's, these are these things we, we know it unconscious or subconsciously. The question is, are we willing to do it? What is that? That's what I say. Okay. So I see you brought up a lot of points. Your dressing will attract a particular type of men. <laughs> so even though it looks like, yeah, the world, the world you look according to the, yeah. the fashion of the world, does it mean that it will catch you the ideal man? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. So not necessarily. are there no men that think that well, from what you have said, some of the high class men, so men of a certain standard yes. in life, economic standard, they expect their wife to dress conservatively, like decently, let's put it that way, decently, such that when they go out to their wife, their wife is not a distraction. Let, me, the people let, me, let me put it this way. What they said is, because some of these men, at the state they are in their life, yes. they, are looking, they are setting leggers. Okay. They are no, they are no more looking for I don't know keeping up with the Joneses or no no no. They want to live a legacy. So I think in their mind, 
what they say in their mind. They are looking at this woman is going to be the mother of my children. What do I want? To, what do I want my children to learn? From? What do I want my children to see? So that's what is going at the back of their mind. If I go out with this woman to like an event, a business event, or a company event, mm-hmm. this woman go and disgrace me so that the next week in the office people will be laughing behind my back and say, "Isn't it? Isn't it unfortunate? Look at this nice man." I look at his wife, you know that kind of thing. So these men are very particular about you know who they want to marry or that kind of stuff. Mm. So if we look at even people in the world that are not necessarily some might be Christians, some might not, but this is the way they are thinking. Then you ask yourself, what about what should Christians do? You know, I think we've gotten to the point where even in the church, someone mentioned this. This person kind of grew up in church, but he's no longer, but that church root is still in him. Yes. He said something, he's about above 50. Yeah. He said something, he said, there isn't this sad, especially in the black churches, yeah. that they just cater to women. He said, go to the black churches. Most of the young, able-bodied men are there. Yeah. Think about it. Look at the churches you know about. Ask yourself, where are, they? Where are those group of men that you can call the young bloods? Where are they? They're not in church because the ch- what they do in church is not, that's not, that's, see, let me put it this way. The way the Bible, the way God set the world in place, yes. he put man in church for, his, for a reason. Okay. Now, if you turn that order and you flip it and put what's happening in the world today and you put women and um, children first, mess it up. Yes, when, when, you, when, you, when you prioritize men, there might be issues, yes, but your solution should be to solve those issues while leaving men in the place they should be. So what are you saying? Are you saying that most black churches women are leading them? No, no, not most black churches. I just should, that's what he no, said. No, I just don't understand what, what, what his point no, like. His point is this. Look at all churches. The churches that attract so-called those young men. Yes. If you look at those churches, if you are serious, if you're a serious Christian, you might not attract those churches. Why? Because someone used this term on a gynocentric, it's woman centered. You might not you might not notice these things. Those let churches me, are women centered. Let, let, let me and let that's me, where you see more men. Or more when, women. Where you see few of these men in this age range. So this age range I'm talking about is from teenage to yeah. like 35. Yes. That age range. Yes. So generally in our traditional setting, you see people that are coming out of children class to people that are just entered the workforce or have been in the workforce for some years. Yeah. That age range. Look at it. Where I use where in our in many churches you see them concept. That is, you understand what I mean. If you really look at it, you will see that the men you see there is either they are married and they've crossed that age bracket, yeah. or they are children. Or some of them, because of parental influence, they just say, let me just come since I'm still living with dad and mom. If you leave them alone, you won't find them. There. So, okay. So what kind of church will men who are actually who think that no. they are matured and that no, no, they will feel at, at home? It's not even men that are mature. The question is, do we let me put it this way? One author made it very simple for me to put because it has been running around in my head for some time. If you look at the Old Testament, you know the priest, yes. you know the prophet. Yes. These are two different concentra- uh, areas of concentration. The priest, the prophet, yes. If you look at what often happens, the priest is very easy for the priesthood to get corrupted. Which is the pastors. So, uh, I mean, they, 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 however, you want, how, however you want to look at it, but often God raises up the prophets. And if you look at the lives of the it's hard, it's terrible. They don't even want to do the job God tells them to do because people will hate them. They will keep prophesying, whoa, whoa, whoa. People will look at them as pessimists. You you know, you never see good in people. Okay. But that is what God is saying. If you look at some of the prophets, God will tell them, go and confront the people with their sins. So, but now, if, if we bring it back to what we're talking about. Exactly. What we're talking we... about is, that is a message that we get in One psychologist said it right. He said, he was asking another, he was asking a bishop, why is it that the church is losing this man? He gave an example. He said he was walking down the streets 
one, one major street. And he saw this big young guy carrying two shopping bags. Mm -hmm. He looked at the guy, the way the guy was looking, he was like, this guy is he's not there. I mean, his mind is somewhere else. He said, if he had gone to that guy and said, see, there's this thing that is happening, or this event, or this adventure, or mm -hmm. military, you know? Yeah. He said the guy would drop those shopping bags in a minute and follow him. Okay, so are you trying to say that it's like the 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 you've what that's what like a flip guy no sense you've so watered it and kicked hard and say you know god loves you it's true god loves you you say this is the it's true god does but the question god says repent even in the revelation so you see the point i'm saying there are some messages that you preach and you go you don't beat about the preach you preach it straight you tell people this is what god wants so in those kind of churches we it's find easier no 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 what i mean if you in we are talking about faithful men, it's also yes. Proverbs 26. If you look at the pastor, whatever, a bishop that embody these things, and the young people can see it in you, and you are telling them this, and teaching, even if they go out and do the own thing at the back of their mind, that thing is still, you know, God can still use that thing to later down the road draw them back to Himself. That's what I mean. So even when they come into the church or setting, they don't go flip back, they know. To years of stuff, you know that kind of thing. Okay, so the church is where there is the hard nut to crack. Where there is the no, I don't, I don't mean it should just be hitting people with sledge. No, 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 no. I get your point. So we're talking about a place where a conservative church. That's what we would call it now, but not necessarily conservative again. Well, that's just, what they call it now, a okay, okay. conservative church. Okay. So there you will find those men that are looking for more serious things. Is that what you're saying? There's where you have the the environment. Okay, so the environment is conducive. For conducive, them. conducive. Conducive. Okay. I know I've gone really out of point and the no, but you have gone really no, long. It, it ties into this. Because okay. why I say it ties into this is think of it this way. People are still getting married. Yes. yes. But the thing is that people are split. They are married and the marriages are not are not I'm lasting not long. So that's why this our tangential, whatever we want to call detour, is key. Because you ask yourself, these two people before they come married. They were involved in God's work, they were zealous, they were... So, you know, you when these things happen, you begin to ask yourself this question, do they, do these people really know what they signed up for in the first place as Christians? Do they know what it is? Before they before people get into marriage, no, no, do no, they even know no, what even it is? Married, even while they were serving God. Did they even know what, they, they, even were know what they were doing? Because if you knew what, if you understood, you know, Jesus Christ said, we should sit down and come. He says you must deny even yourself, crucify yourself, carry your own cross. No, he's not even talking about money. So indirectly, you are yeah, you're actually saying that so many Christians that go to church don't even know what they're doing in church. I'm they're just serving. I'm not going to but they don't really know what pass church. No, no, I'm not just, saying I'm not saying that I'm not saying in definite terms. I'm just saying that people should first understand what it is to first start in their service to God. Yes. They should first understand what their relationship with God is all about. So, before a marriage can succeed and not have this problem of splitting, the two people, before they even come together, must have solidified their relationship with God. Yes. So that when they come together, the wind of marriage and whatever it is, the differences in, in that will always yes. exist in any couple will not split them. Yes. Let, right. me ask, so let, me, let me ask you this of, question. Okay. Let me ask, to your marriage, let me ask you this question. Think of it this way. You have siblings, isn't it? Yes, I do. Obviously, you are not all you and all of your siblings. You people don't get along all the time. No, of course. But because you people nice. don't, but because you people don't get along, you don't wake up one day and say, "You, you're no longer born of my father, or you're no longer born of me." You don't this this brother or this exactly. sister. Or... If that is the case, I don't even blood siblings. Now think of marriage, which is on a different level. Yeah. So you think of what we now make so-called Christian to suddenly say, "Oh, we're incompatible." So it's all about the foundation. I'm just saying, I'm trying to compare the, you know, these things and say, you know, it's it, all about it. I know it's an open and uh, open ended discussion, but so first of all, your ideal wife or ideal woman is a woman that first understands her relationship with Christ. Yes. Understand very important. Very well. She understands her relationship with Christ not very not, well. Not only that, she understands her role and place in, even in creation. Mm. Because that's one big issue. It's, you know, think of it this way. Your parents, some of them trained you, gave you money, encouraged you. Some of some of them even encouraged you to go for higher degrees, masters, PhD, 
or if you went the other route of trade or business, you've started your business, you know, you're doing one or two things, money is coming in, you're living your life, you know, you handle things. Mm -hmm. Now suddenly one man from one corner will come and they say love, you know, came into the mix and you saw will of God or you did not see will of God, your chemicals or hormones confused you, whatever case it may be, you people got married. Now think of it this way. Mm -hmm. If you if you if you did not understand your role, the role that God placed that particular role God puts you in, in creation, mm -hmm. and how you need to, with God helping both of you, you know, blend mm -hmm. into that family, there's going to be a problem. Because your husband is trying to be a, 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 a husband and a leader in the home, mm -hmm. but you'll be resisting that leadership. Because because you mean you believe in your life, isn't yeah. it? But if you really understand, you know, understand these rules, when you come in at that friction start, you don't just panic and start, you know. Mm. It will come, but you, you already understand, okay, okay, you know. That would even make us to, to talk about submission. But not oh, okay. this video is so long. Let's talk. <laughs> Let's talk. It's too long. Let's stop here and then we should talk about um we should talk about submission because people are talking a lot of things about submission but for now we're going to stop here you said a lot of things a woman that should understand her place in creation a woman that should have the right courage because courage and dressing are very very actually uh perpendicular is that what you say parallel. parallel there's a parallel relationship between your dressing and your courage right and then uh, a woman that dress well, people remember her face. That was very important. Not her body, mm -hmm. not not some distracting things. Because if they remember her other things, then they forget her face. Even if they see her next time, they don't know that was the person. Mm -hmm. hmm. Very important. Uh, uh, that's I learned something today. And then a woman of her word, a woman of virtue. Okay, and then then you also said um, the place in creation. Okay, so. A woman that loves God such that um, the place that God has in her life to be easy for her husband to find his place in her life. Right? No, the other way. Okay. So she loves God so much that she understands her place. That she understands her life. place in the man's life. Because, I mean, remember that Genesis 2. What she loves God is? so much that she understands her place in her husband's to be his life. No, when 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 if so she's not trying to flip the coin. The, the problem is, is when you flip it. No, even people outside outside church, they see it. They say once, for example, if a woman ends more than her husband, mm -hmm. she might tolerate that situation for maybe mm -hmm. one year, two years, but eventually that will be the part of the thing that will make her break from her husband. So she's looking for a leader. Right? So that is the way God's one made. thing that we're talking about. Okay, so does that mean that you can't marry a woman that ends more than you? That's why I say she understanding her. Please. In that would make her to submit in spite of the fact that, that she ends the so In that situation, most likely it's not the man that will cause the issue. You see the, what I'm saying? So let, let, let me rephrase it. There are some relationships where the woman actually gets for that husband. But her husband has so much to offer her that she knows that the yes, money I'm, is just. I'm any more than him, but okay. just him being. Me, me being by, her, by his side and him being my husband makes me a better woman. You, you understand? So that's another situation. Mm -hmm. There are some men, maybe because of uh, what they are doing. For example, if, you are, if your husband is a pastor, a missionary, or you know something like that, yeah, obviously, if you're working mm -hmm. by his side, yeah. you, you'll be, you know, no matter how much people give you. Know, so in those kind of situations, a woman really... I think it also has to do with the woman understanding, choosing, choosing, choosing the right person. Let's put it that way, or accepting the right person. Because if you accept the right person that you believe God, you know, is sending your way, that means you're going to buy into that man's vision. So a woman that buys into your vision, the woman must okay. buy into that man. So man, if, okay, so you want a woman that buys into your vision. You have a vision in life, and you want a woman. But what if the woman has her own vision? Do you know the problem? How do you with synchronize? Do you know the problem with that? We have actually we had this discussion somewhere. The, the, the question is this: if we are talking about biblically, if mm -hmm. we look at biblically, let's let's make another video for this. Okay. It's getting too long. <laughs> so that that's the point. The man has his vision. The woman has a vision. So who 
how do they do they have to synchronize synchronize their vision let, let, let or should they we we'll make another video for I that know, I know. we need to really talk about this we're going to make we're going very to... important because it looks like the women have to forget their dreams their passion yes. their vision their purpose in life so that they can be a help me for their husband in every aspect I think, think, I, I, so... think, I think it should be this way think of it this way let's suspense no no next, next video let, let's just wrap, wrap it up next video okay. Suspense. So, okay. watch the next video for the this this other part. This other part.